so okay so uh hi dominic thank you for coming to our uh first event in 2023 uh we have in the past uh organized events on the flutter and today is a new event on flutter technology and i'll leave uh, dominic to present uh, himself sure uh, I probably have like my introduction, my first talk, so I will start immediately with my first talk if it's okay. Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay, I'll share my screen. Does everybody see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Awesome. Okay, my first talk is like called New Year New Changes. Uh, it's about like Flutter uh, and Dart releases that happen in a Flutter forward in Nairobi. Uh, just small agenda for today. Uh, I will first start about the Flutter, uh, then uh, we can do like small Q and A. All, but I can skip that. That's that's okay. And we can uh, do the ramp up your Flutter up with the Firebase. I will do like small introduction of the Firebase and how it can help your Flutter development a lot. And, and again, we can do like small Firebase Q and A. Uh, it depends how long those two talks will be. Uh, we can skip. We'll definitely skip Q&A. Uh, a bit introduction of me. Uh, I am CTO of Twitashi. Uh, I'm also a Flutter developer. I have been Flutter developer since since Flutter 0.7, I think, something like that. So uh, I survived a lot of hard times in a Flutter. Like right now, it's a completely different, uh, completely different technology than it was in the beginning. Uh, I'm also Firebase GDE. Uh, I have been working with the Firebase like for the past uh, past seven years, and uh, my Twitter handle is Rizizup. If you want to find me there, uh, definitely uh, hit me. If any, if you have any question about this talk or anything about the Flutter and Firebase, hit me there. Uh, I would love to answer your question. Uh, those are my four technologies uh, that I work with for the past two years, uh, last is Bitcoin, because uh, our company is focusing about the Bitcoin. Uh, we do some uh, we do some cool stuff in the Bitcoin era, uh, recently in the Nostr protocol. Uh, in the Nostr protocol, we don't use Firebase, but yeah, I just wanted to mention Firebase that I use it in other apps. And Dart and Flutter, obviously. Okay, I want to mention first what's the last couple of years on Flutter. Uh, Flutter is covering six platforms. It's covering uh, right now web, iOS, Android, Linux, and macOS. And like we can call it seven platforms, also embed devices. Uh, the best two ones are definitely Android and iOS. Flutter was first mobile framework. It moved more to the multiple devices later, but Android is still, uh, Android and iOS are still in the best uh, state right now. Web is coming up and uh, desktop devices too. It already have 5 billion uh, developers out there. It's third open, uh, open source project on GitHub by the number of contributors. And it already has 700,000 apps out there. On Google Play, I don't know if you ever used Alibaba or some Google apps, for example, Google Play, uh, Google Pay is written in a Flutter. It's using Flutter uh, views. Uh, BMW is also using Flutter for their uh, mobile app for their cars. There are two releases happening in the Flutter forward uh, in Africa. Uh, there were like, or we can call it free. There was a Dart 2.19, Dart 3, and also Flutter, uh, Flutter 3.7. I will first talk about Flutter uh, offered first talk about Dart 2.19 and Dart 3, because it's like underneath the Flutter. You first need to learn a bit of Dart after you want to, if you want to start with a Flutter. So I will first mention Dart. Well, what are the changes in Dart 2.19? Dart 2.19 was like last small update in a Dart that happened immediately in the, in the Flutter forward. I think it was before the Flutter forward but doesn't matter. Uh, it was small changes, uh, just 
only big change that was there is was an isolate one. That means that you can create isolates more easily than it was before. You can use compute and iso new isolate create. It, it was not that easy to like manage your isolates. Uh, now you have isolate run method, and it's much easier to uh, run background things and more heavier, uh, more compute heavier uh, task. Also, uh, there were small, small performance and bug fix updates. Nothing like uh, that we need to mention. But we have Dart free alpha release. That's a, that's a big thing. We have first productivity updates in that. Uh, we have records. That that's a thing that was missing in a Dart uh, and other uh, the developers from other languages were calling for it. It's a new ability to written multiple values. Uh, I will definitely showcase an uh, uh, example of that. And if you're returning the multiple uh, values, all variables are type, all, all variables are, are type safe. I have, yeah, I have typo there. All variables are <clears throat> type safe and check during the development. There is a uh, there is an example of that. You, for example, in this method, we are returning two. Uh, doubles for the method, and it's written as a pair, as a record. We can also also do uh, more advanced stuff. We can do like uh, type checking. Uh, in this case, we are checking the class square SQL, but we are just asking if the uh, we have switched there is on a shape that is uh, that have class implement implements the class shape. There's a small thing before the class called sealed, and it's also a new thing in a Dart. Because in a Dart free, uh, there is a new types of classes. There is an interface class, base class, final class, and sealed class, and also mixing class. Those two, uh, those two, uh, two things are pretty much familiar. Final can speak for for itself. Sealed class is combination of the abstract final and uh, and other uh, classes. Uh, I would love to like showcase again this example. It's an excellent example of the of the sealed class and mixing class. Uh, that's just saying that this specific class is going to be used as a mixin. Uh, those. Those things were mentioned in the Medium article in Dart language. I definitely go to Medium Dart Lang, and all the classes are pretty much uh, explained there. There is also a direct platform you know, library interop. I don't know if any of you is good or bad, or I don't know. I'm not that great, for example, native developer. Uh, I have been working with Android. Uh, with Java and Kotlin, but I'm, for example, not good in iOS. I'm not good in Swift developer. Uh, I have hard times when I have to do something native. I usually manage to do it, but there is new thing that you can do in a Dart. It's called a Direct Platform Library Interrupt, and it's new ability to call the native libraries directly from the Dart. It generates the bindings between your Dart code and the native code. And it's currently experimental. Uh, there was a great example on a Flutter forward about that. Uh, they used, I think it was half, uh, yeah, half native methods. And they created the Dart bindings to those native methods. And they were able to like call it without need it, without need to write a new class you know, in the native. And, there was nothing needed. It generates automatically. There is also portability en enhancements. Uh, there is WebAssembly called Webs. Was Web there is uh, Dart can be now uh, built to WebAssembly. Also, they are trying to focus on a new standard for uh, standard set architecture called RISC. This we I never heard about it by the way. I heard it like when they uh, when they talked about it, and better arm support. There is a lot of uh, arm 
uh, ARM supports out there. There are, there are a lot of apps that need better ARM support, and the, the Dart team is focusing on that too. Also, back change. I, I, I don't know if you already saw it on a, on a pub dev. There's a, the lots of packages are called Dart Free Ready. Uh, what it means, there's a 100% sound now served in the Dart Free Alpha release. Uh, that means that all the code needs to be 100% null safety. There is nothing. There, there is nothing that like part part of the code is uh, not null safe. Part of code uh, code is null safe. All or of all of your uh, code needs to be null safe now. So right now in the Dart three, it's turned on. So all of your code you have to change before you upgrade to Dart three. If the package is already uh, ready for the Dart three, it have the tag Dart three ready, so you know that you can use that package in a Dart three project. Uh, usually, it's not a header because we move to do Dart three, uh, Dart three to do now, sound now safety a year ago or more than a year ago. It was more than a year ago. And about 100% of the top 10 uh, packages or top 100 packages, if I'm sure, are 100% uh, sound null safe and they are Dart free ready. Uh, other, uh, other are like 99%. Per so lots of packages already out there are ready for the Dart free. You can check via Dart CLI if your code is ready. Uh, if not, you'll have to do the small changes to, to upgrade to the Dart free. And there are already also cleanup and overall flick six. The thing that happened on a Flutter forward and the, these recent updates is that the team is now focusing not more and delivering more and more features that they did in the past years, but they are now focusing uh, they are now focusing more to like fix the stuff there that is in a, in a Dart and Flutter, because they were forgetting about a lots of stuff there, and now they are listening to the community. Okay, that that, that is a thing that it need needs to be fixed. Uh, the sound now safety was also the thing that community was calling for, uh, and other like enhancements that that needs to be done. So yeah, it's a great to see like uh, Dart team is focusing more to stabilize the Dart releases and the, the stabilize Dart and get those bugs fixed before they will do the new big change. But Dart three is pretty pretty big. Second thing that was released on a Flutter format was Flutter three point seven. It's already out there. I think it's right now three. Flutter 3.7.8, if I'm sure, or maybe 10. So already uh, we are uh, 10 versions after this or this release. There were a couple of new things also. We have enhanced material free support. I want to, and menu bars and cascading menus. I want to showcase uh, some of the, yeah, I will. Uh, yeah. Can my sh can me everybody see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so this is a great app. Uh, definitely go to the link. I will sh share it here. If uh, organizers can share it under the video or somewhere, it would be great. Uh, this is a great website where you can see all the components that are already in a in a flutter. Uh, for example, this cascading menu was in, in a fl uh, Flutter uh, before Flutter 3.7. Now it's out there. It's much easier to implement. Uh, there were a couple of libraries that were doing that, but now it's uh, in the Flutter itself. The, there is lots of components. I will definitely recommend you check it, check this website uh, if your, for example, if your app is 100% material, you have lots of new components to implement. Okay, I will switch. Uh, up, up. Yeah, 
I'm back. We have also Impeller preview. If you haven't heard about Impeller, it's a new engine uh, that they want to move to. Uh, from now it's Kia, they want to move to the Impeller. It's still in a preview and still a lot of work to do, but it should have better performance. It should have better shader performance. We have some, for example, now you have uh, programs that some of the first animations are pretty chank and they are laggy. Impair should solve that. Also, some graphic resources uh, uh, should be used in a better way and it's portable. So it should make your app more performant, but it's now in preview. It's not ready, uh, uh, production ready yet. But in the future, they want to move to the Empire 100% and make all apps uh, more performant. And also on a the web, they want to uh, be on the same level as a, as a native. You have RS release validation. What is that? Now, before you release your uh, Flutter or your IPA to the, to the App Store, you can see what is the version number, build number, what is your display name. You can choose, check those values if, if they are right, if you are setting them right before you push it to the App Store, before you upload that. Sometimes you had uh, some of the some of the developers had problems that they didn't change. Uh, in this case, it's a com example identifier. They didn't change the uh, identifier, and they had problems that they didn't know where to change it because you have the native part and you have the Flutter part. Lots of developers out there are focused on Flutter mainly, and when they need to change something in the iOS, they have problems with that. So this should at least give you a hint that there is something wrong and usually you found somewhere you know, on the internet how to solve that. There's also uh, problems with the image assets that you're missing some uh, sizes. It's, it's also great to have that. And there's a dev tool improvements and much more like Flutter 3.7 wasn't big, uh, wasn't small release. Uh, I probably like mismatched myself when I told you that they don't want to like release new features uh, and stabilize uh, Flutter and Dart. They still want to do that. They are doing that with the latest Flutter forward. They did that, but they still like delivering features. But those kinds of features were like more focused to stabilize what is already out there. Even it still looks new, but uh, yeah, I, I will skip. I will show. I will go to do another slide. So, a couple of new components. Uh, there is iOS lists. There is also great support for uh, 3D. The, there, there is lots of Flutter developers that are trying to do the like 3D stuff. Uh, there is a great example of the 3D. Yeah, second, yeah. This is a Flutter app that runs uh, on a tablet. As I'm, or, man, uh, it's it's on a on a desktop, and it's running like almost sixty FPS, but it runs natively on a, in a Flutter, and it's great to see uh, those kind of things. In the past, there was a lot of talk that Flutter can't run 3D and, and things like that. Uh, with import and things like that, we are moving past that. Still, Flutter is going to be like 2D framework, but that's going to be support for uh, features like that. I, I love that. Yep. Uh, is this app a tutorial that you find or you build it? Uh, did I build it? No, no, no. It's... Uh, okay, uh, say it again. 
so I was saying if uh, the water, uh, the way how you model the water, mm -hmm. do you find somewhere a library that is building this? Or yeah, you... it's not my like example. It's uh, somewhere else. Uh, it's more friend, but uh, that guy used. I think it's it was basic blender textures that he used. Uh, and he just like uh, connects it to the flutter to like raise the uh, level of the of the water. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there is there is. I think it's open sourced, so you can check it out on his Twitter or on his on his GitHub account uh, and see what's out there. I, I think it's a great demo of the 3D uh, and. Definitely showing what's possible, uh, the possibilities for the future of the Flutter development. Other stuff that's happening in the in a Flutter 3.7 release, there is a magnification. Uh, if anyone uh, don't know what's that, yeah, it's it's the thing when you have the <laughs> you, when you have the cursor on specific letters in the letter, and it's magnify it magnifies the letters. Uh, there is a global selection problems. Uh, there, there was a couple of problems in the Flutter that you sh can't, uh, you are not able to like triple click, do the triple click, uh, do the like selection of the bit text. That there was a lot of uh, problems with the selections uh, should be solved in a, in a newest Flutter. There is also context, custom context menus. Uh, if you have iOS, you are pretty familiar with the context menus. That's a thing that when you uh, do the multi multiple taps on a text and it shows you the hint if you want to copy, share, or replace the word, you can do custom context menus. And there is also lots of code. I think all of that in a, in a Flutter uh, was moved from uh, uh, was moved to the Swift. Uh, on an iOS and also bitcode in an iOS is not used. There is a bitcode deprecation. So that's it. That's, uh, those are the releases uh, in a Flutter 3.7 and Dart 2.19 and Dart 3. Oh, am I sure? No, I forgot. Yeah, it's a Dart 3, sorry. Hey, any question on that? We have, yeah, we we are on on time on the Q and A section. If any question on on the Flutter, I can move to definitely to do another uh, the second talk about the Firebase. But if you have questions about the Flutter, I would love to answer those. Seems not. All right. From my yeah. side, no. Although I would say that the sealed way of the keyword sealed has a different meaning in Java. And for those who are uh, working with Java, it will be quite confusing what's happening in the Flutter. In Java, you can, if you put sealed on the class, you cannot extend that anymore. It's like final in Flutter, final class in Flutter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that there is a mis mismatch in that. Uh, they want to do that like extra thing on, on top of that, uh, and that's that's a sealed class. Yeah, they probably should name it differently. Uh, but it's not me who who named it, unfortunately. Yeah. But a good point. Thank you. Uh, okay, I will move to the second talk. Uh, Okay, so, yeah, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, I will do the small Firebase interaction with the uh, Dart code. Uh, there's, again, I don't want to, I don't know if you all heard about the Firebase. I will do quick, uh, just interaction, what is Firebase? It's uh, backend as a service. So you don't have to worry about like your compute engines. You don't have to worry about your database if it's scaling or not. You just connect it as a service, and Google does that for you. All the managing stuff, all the uh, all the like 
compute engine if it's scaling, if it's not, if you if you have enough resources, all these things are uh, doing uh, the Google does that for you. You can like manage those kind of things a bit because it's still layer on top of the Google Cloud. So you can go to the Google Cloud's same project and manage it there. But yeah, uh, you don't usually have to do that because Google pretty much doing it right. And it's service, as I heard, as you heard, it's service provided by Google. It's acquired. Uh, it, in the past, it was just a database that was like, it wasn't Google, it was a small startup, but it was acquired by Google. Uh, just a small hint where it's on a, on a scale, you can manage by yourself your compute engines, your VMs. Uh, you can do like contact cluster, where it's much easier than the VMs, but still you have to do a lot of stuff. Then you have like managed app platforms as a, for example, app engine, where lots of things are ma already managed by the, in this case, by Google. But still you have to do a bit of configuration and stuff. And on the left side, I think on your, on, on your side, it's also on the left side, you have several execution at management. You have, for example, cloud functions. You just deploy your code. It gives you URL and you're just calling that specific URL without worrying about anything in an infrastructure. And in that case or in that scale, there is a Firebase also. Firebase have three things to, um, they want to, uh, Firebase have three things they are focusing on. They have build, freeze, and monitor, uh, and engage. Those are three parts of the uh, features they have. Uh, build is more for the coders, like that database authentication and stuff, release and monitor. You are tracking your bugs. You are tracking uh, how your uh, user are behaving. And engage, uh, you want to also do a bit tweaking uh, in a production to change how users are behaving in your app, if they are coming back and things like that. There are lots of cool uh, services under each part. So definitely check it out. Uh, if you haven't tried Firebase, uh, definitely. If you are a coder, definitely check the left part, build better apps. But I would definitely focus on those two, two parts too. Okay. Uh, in the example, I will use a couple of features and the authentication. Uh, it's a service, again, in a Firebase. It has pre-built UIs. It supports OAuth all two, And it already has connected like Google, Twitter, GitHub, and, and uh, a Facebook authenticators in it. Firestore, I'm gonna use the Firestore also. It's no SQL cloud database that use documents and collection of the documents as a model and it's horizontally scaled. So it doesn't matter if you have like 100, uh, 100 users, 1000 users and 100 documents, it's gonna pretty much run the same. Uh, there's, there are two databases in a Firebase. If you are familiar with your Firebase first, it's a Firestore, second is a real-time database. By the way, those lines should be this way. Uh, on the left side, we have the real-time database. On the right side, we have Firestore. Uh, real-time database is a, a JSON tree. Uh, you can do just basic queries. It's limited by region, limited scaling. You can pretty much just create new instances of a real-time database. It's good for a small amount of data or small amount of data, small data that's, uh, that you are calling quickly. But if you want to store something big, it's not that good for that. But we have Firestore that holds that. It's a collection of documents. Each document is JSON with, with a bit of typing. Uh, and you can do strong queries. You can do uh, 
sorting. Uh, you can do, I don't know, uh, bigger than, smaller than, equals, and things like that. It's a regional or multi-regional. You can do, uh, you can do multi-regional. So you have instance in each like continent, and it automatically scales for you. Also, some of the new things that were released. Uh, there was an event in New York uh, that happened. Uh, it was Firebase event. Uh, now they have, for example, count in the, you know Firestore that was missing a lot. Yet those are the uh, again. I think I, I don't know why I name it uh, this way. So on the right side, you have Firestore. On the left side, you have real-time database. And real-time database, it's a base, basic big JSON tree. On the left side, you see the uh, Firestore. It's a collection of documents. The blue, uh, the blue bubbles are each document. The yellow bubbles are real. I don't know how to call it, rectangles are uh, our collection and you can do also like connecting bit connection between each document and collection also between the uh, documents yeah it's a new newer solution it was inspired by real time database and uh, you pay uh, also great to mention that you pay for reads and writes and it's a shallow by default. So if you d download, for example, user workouts, you don't download. Uh, if I download this, I don't download all of his history. We also gonna use cloud storage. Uh, I don't want to um, explain it more. It's just like uh, Google cloud storage. That's that have API for you. Uh, it have higher scalability, high reliability, something that is expected from Google. It's a like object, basic object storage service. Yeah, you have your JPEGs in this case. Uh, each JPEG have its own URL if you want. It's signed and it's stored in a in a bucket. And we're gonna use. We don't going to use Firebase hosting, but it's good to mention that Firebase have its own hosting. So you can host um, a website on, your, on your Firebase and under a few transferred megabytes, it's pretty much free. So if you want free hosting, use Firebase for your app and it have backups for your previous version of your website. Uh, and cloud functions. If you saw the scale on the beginning, uh, they were on the left side. So it's managed by the Google. It's a, you, it, you run your backend code without managing any servers. And few, there are a few types of cloud functions that have triggers. Uh, one of the examples of a trigger can be, I wrote something in my document. And if that document changes, my cloud function XY, Gonna change, uh, gonna gonna be triggered, or if mm, some new user signs up, this specific uh, cloud function gonna be uh, triggered. And there are much more triggers than I mentioned, so all of them are you know Firebase uh, documentation, and it has Node.js. There are also Python cloud function and Dart. And version two is coming soon. It's on you know, alpha. Uh, it should have better scaling, better manageability, but it's still in alpha. And Python, Dart are great uh, languages. If you want to write a cloud function in those languages, there are ways to do that. Also in your Firebase, I'm going to skip machine learning, sorry. Uh, as I mentioned, there are a couple of things in the analyze section. Again, I don't want to like, so we are lacking of time, but uh, you have Google Analytics, Google Analytics built in in a Firebase. 
you have performance monitoring so you can track how your app is behaving, if it's faster or slower, if it's slower after one second or before one second and things like that. Uh, Firebase Crashlytics, it's pretty known right now in the mobile space that you can uh, use that feature to track all of your bugs in your, in a, in your app. With Flutter, it's not the perfect. Uh, it's getting better. It got better in the past months, uh, the connection between the Firebase Crashlytics and Flutter, but you can tr use it. Everything that I mentioned, you can use in a far, uh, Flutter. An example, okay. I have four screens that I want to create uh, on the left side. It's a just mock-up, so I don't worry about design right now. But I have basic sign-up screen. I have some activity, activity timeline. I have my profile. And also, I have something like there is called places near me. What I'm going to use? Okay, for the sign in and sign up, I'm going. I have Facebook login, Twitter login, Google login, email login, registration close. Okay, for activity, what are the features? I have feed, images, also there is something like notifications. On a profile, I have user information, I have profile image. And on the nearby places, I have images, comments, and search. So, what I'm going to use in a Firebase? For the sign up and sign in, I'm going to just use Firebase authentication. In an activity, I'm going to use a lot of more Firebase features. I have real time database, Cloud Firestore. Also, I'm going to use uh, cloud functions, cloud storage, and cloud messaging. For profile, cloud for Firestore, cloud storage, and Firebase authentication. And for new application, cloud storage, cloud Firestore. The search, it, it's a bit funny because everybody is asking why the Firestore does not have a search feature if the Google is uh, god of the feature searches. Unfortunately, it does not have something like full text search. You can use third party things like Algolia, uh, but probably it's gonna change in the future. Okay, there are newer version. Uh, of the Firebase core and find about those are just examples that I want to show you. Definitely, it's a bit a bit code is new newer. Uh, this is a I don't know few months old example, but still it's up to date with the things that I want to show. Okay, if you want to use Firebase, you first need core. For a sign in, you need Firebase auth. If you want to do Google sign-in, I need also Google sign-in package. And what I'm going to do, I first need Firebase of instance. I will second do the Google sign-in that will pop up the, that will do the, the pop-up of the uh, Google sign-in. I will get that user from that. And then I will pass that specific access token and ID token to the Firebase. So the Firebase will lock with the tokens and manage that specific user. Also, if you don't want to, this is a great feature that I love in a Firebase authentication. You can do something called sign in anonymously. You still can have your user signed in but he doesn't need to have any email or password and something like that. You can do sign in anonymously. It will create user ID for him. It will, authentication library will tell you that he's signed in, but there is no info, no other info about that specific user. It, in some cases, it's great. For example, in my app, it's great for a closed feature. So the user still can check the feed of other users without need to creating in his own account. If you later want to connect, for example, a Google account, an anonymous account, you can do that. You can join accounts and manage them as a one. And yeah, it works like a charm. 
Yeah, I, I, in this case, I have Google, somebody uh, signed in with Google, somebody signed in with your Facebook, some anonymous sign-ins. Okay, now move to the activity feed. I want to do, oh, this is, this is a, there is a mistake in my slides, but I want to do storage and cloud fire store for my feed. Storage is used for uh, for images, cloud files or for uh, data that is shown. Okay, let's do the uploading to the Firebase storage. Pretty easy. I will create my instance of the Firebase storage. I will uh, find my path for the for the file that I want to save. It can be slash images slash something. And I will put file in that specific location with some metadata and will ask Firebase for the download URL. What, what, what will Firebase do is that he will sign that uh, image with a token and gives you download URL for that specific image. You don't have to do that. Like you can up, just upload without worrying about, about download URL, but usually you want, you want to have your download URL. And the same thing goes with the database, with the Firestore. I will create my instance. I will find my collection. In this case, can be feed. I will uh, add the title, hello, Flutter on Air, for example. Content, how are you? And yeah, it's out there in a feed. Great on the Firebase team and Firebase is that it does have Flutter widgets that are made for, uh, or Flutter have widgets that are ready for Firebase use. By the way, in the last year, I think it was at the end of the year, was really specific Firebase widgets in the Flutter, or it, it's a part of the Firebase library that there are kind of wrappers around what I'm talking right now. But basically, uh, if you want, for example, have own feed of the latest uh, post, you just do the collection reference on the feed. You will create stream builder and you will ask of, for the snapshots. That means that you will ask for the new feed, new things that are happening in a collection of feed. And each time that feed is going to change, this builder is going to be called. Yeah. There's an example. So if, and also it's a real time. So all the previous data is going to be changed. If somebody going to edit his post, it will real time be changed on your side. So in this case, he changed the Flutter study jam to the just study jam. And you see that it's immediately changed without like saving or refreshing and something on the other side. Firebase messaging. Uh, on the feed side, we had on uh, the notification. Firebase messaging is kind of harder because we have two sides of the, uh, of the notification. It's a background and foreground notification. Background, uh, just quick uh, what it is. Background means that your app is closed. Uh, you are having, for example, it's on table or your app, or you are on, on your phone, but your app is not running. Foreground, uh, on the other hand, is when your app is running and the user is currently swiping an app, for example, and looking at, the, at your uh, amazing app. Okay, how to handle those notification? You can do a lot of stuff. In this case, what I'm doing, I'm asking, I'm giving the Firebase messaging my own handler that will get message, uh, that will be called when a new background, um, new background notification is received. So I will receive some data from that message 
and it can be uh, can save it, for example, in local database to later show to be shown to the user. I can send notification to the user and be like, okay, it's probably not shown on his screen. He probably killed it, but still, I want to show it on uh, some screen on some notification list in the app. So I will save it in the local database. By the way, the background handler always needs to be st uh, static. Uh, so it doesn't know any state of your R of the classes of, of the app. Uh, Firebase messaging on message listen, in the other hand, is the foreground handler. So I will listen on any message that is received in the time that I am in the gap. So I am just looking at the screen. Oh, there is a new message that is received. And what I what I can do, for example, uh, what would we do in a Twitoshi, for example, is that I will pull the, all the information from the message and I will show it again as a notification, even if it's in the app. On iOS, when you receive foreground notification, it's not shown for the user. The, default behavior of the of the system is like if you receive the uh, uh, receive the notification it's on the background not in a foreground that's it we implemented pretty much all the stuff in the in the app so we have google sign in i the facebook and twitter and other are similar. We know how to upload images. We know how to do uh, creation of the database uh, items, or we can do the creation of the uh, database documents. We can change notification, or we can handle notification, not change. We can also change uh, user profile. It's a basic, again, uh, document in a database. And also we can do this. It's again, database and uh, storage. But we have a lot of bugs in the app. Okay, we can kill one, another two are shown. That's nothing unexpected in the new app. So what we can do is create a handler on a basic Flutter error that's a that's a callback from the Flutter itself that will be called when some error is happening in your code. And we can push that specific error to the Firebase. So you're going to see problems. Do you have a code example for uh, binding the Flutter error? Yeah, there is a code ex example right now. Uh, you are On sharing the first the you're sharing the list of uh, anonymous users with icons. I'm not sharing. What anonymous? There is a list with. Try to restart the sharing. Okay, I have different. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's now it's working. Oh, you mm -hmm. should have mentioned that here before, because uh, on my screen it's like up to date with my uh, with my uh, slides. Sorry. Weird. Okay. So I'm handling the errors in my in my code. I'm connecting the crashlytics to the Flutter on error callback. And I'm receiving all the errors that are happening in my app to do crashlytics, and later I can solve those books. By the way, there was an update in a, in a crashlytics. There is better support for the errors from the Flutter, so you can read them, or there there is better readability in uh, uh, you know errors. So you gonna be understand that uh, those errors gonna be more understandable. Also performance monitoring. I mentioned it earlier that I want to track 
how my app is behaving in a, uh, in a production. In my mobile, it can behave, I don't know, it's super fast. I have super performant mobile. I have iPhone 14, for example. That is super quick. I have great connection. But what about other countries? What about other phones? How it's behaving? So you can track how your app is starting, how fast it is to see if there is a like huge number of the users that are they are having app start time, app start time more than three seconds, which is bad. Like more than three seconds, user probably gonna uninstall that app pretty soon. Security. Uh, there is a lot of questions if the Firebase is secure or not. So you have security rules uh, on your database. That's a, that's access control of your of the data and the validation. And there is a sy specific syntax of the rules that uh, needs to be learned first. But I think it's pretty easy. Uh, in this case, I have database um, of burgers and its reviews. I am allowing write only if request have stars more than the zero. And also I'm allowing greet only if the that specific review is marked as a public. That, that can be like much harder validation schema. Uh, in this game, I'm validating a lot of fields in the in the document to be uh, to make sure that somebody who is writing or some developer who is writing to the database will not write like corrupted uh, corrupted documents. We we have to think that uh, Firebase is no SQL database, and it's very much JSON that you are writing. So if it's valid JSON, you can write it there, and you want to have at least small consistency in your in your database. And thank you. That was that was all I had. Those two talks. Uh, again, if you have any questions, I would love to hit me on the Twitter, uh, hit me on email. Uh, it's a Dominic uh, at uh, Simonic me. So hit me if if you have any question, if you hit me there, I would love to answer. Uh, if it's a Firebase or Frater, I would love to answer those. That's it. Uh, if anyone have a question, uh, ask me now. Um, I, for example, do you have problems with uh, the Firestore? of uh, problems in the sense that uh, illegal stuff until the rules were implemented in the fire stores do you mm -hmm. have problems that uh, illegal data was inserted the... illegal data was inserted yeah or corrupted data corrupted data uh what do you mean can, can you give me example of the like corrupted data like what do you mean with the corrupted data well uh so for firestore you can access you connect directly from your application to the firestore yep. Uh, yep. and inside in your application you have uh you know the keys that you know what third party can use it yeah I, okay i i know what i mean okay there is a there is a thing called upcheck in a firebase so you can verify that the that the one uh, that the client that is writing to your database it's your client not any other client. If anyone will steal your keys or uh, the, your Firebase ID, okay. he's not able to go through the app check because he's he's no his signs uh, or her, uh, his signature of the app is not valid for your Firebase project. It's called app check. It's for iOS, web, and uh, Android. So in the web, it's verifying via uh, uh, recaptcha. Uh, uh, on iOS, it's using. <sighs> now I forgot the names of the feature. It's verifying the signature of the app on the on the iOS, and it's verifying also the signature of the un of the Android app. So, if it's not your client, he will not be able to write to the to your database. 
Okay. Um, it's and object. I had another question related to related to A B testing. But okay. uh, I forgot it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no worries, no worries. Anyone else have question? Maybe I have a stupid question. The impeller. There is nothing like stupid question. You should... <laughs> yeah. You, you should activate it or it's built in if you are using the latest Flutter. Uh, again, again. Sorry, I missed the f start of the for, question. For the for the impeller, you need uh -huh. to enable it. Or yeah, it's yeah, there is, enabled with the latest. Yeah, there, there, is a, there is a feature flag for the impeller. Uh, I think it's a uh, flutter run dash dash run imp or something like that. There is a feature flag for the implier. Uh, it's not uh, enabled by default. Okay, thanks. Yep, no problem. But definitely check it out. It's like great. I tried it on my iOS app and it improved performance like 25 FPS, which is a lot. Yeah, I need for an app that are using a lot of animations. Yeah, if you if you have a lot of animation, you're gonna see huge improvement definitely on the start because there's like uh, shader junk uh, animation problems with the on the iOS mostly. Uh, the Impulse should solve that, but unfortunately, I'm not sure if Impulse is gonna be released in uh, like upcoming month. They are working on it hard, but. Uh, it's still a long way to to, uh, to go, but go check it out. If, if it works with you, you can try it out in a production, but I would not recommend it. Thanks. I will try it. <laughs> Thanks for your question, by the way. Anyone else? Any question other? Okay, if any, no, any other uh, question? Uh, huh? Yes, one more. <laughs> um, <laughs> Go ahead. I will need to, to uh, implement the Firebase performance to mm -hmm. check if we have some junks in animation or in the UI. Is that possible or? Yeah, kind of, kind of, not 100%. The, the performance monitoring is not like Flutter 100% ready. It tracking like native performance. So it can uh, give you a hint what is your start time of the of the of the app. You can do yeah. some connection bef between the like uh, performance monitoring and your Flutter app. You can call performance monitoring directly in your app. Uh, also the performance monitoring is tracking free uh, is tracking freeze times so those are kind of good for the flutter apps but about the jank uh there is i think there is nothing that i think performance monitoring is not tracking that as far as i'm not sure maybe i'm wrong but i'm not sure if it's tracking uh like animation jank no 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 i'm i think not this will be a great feature. Yeah, <laughs> right now I'm be... tracking uh, performance of the start time of the app and uh, mm -hmm. also some API calls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's super gotcha. easy, but I need to track all the animations. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, yeah, I can give that feedback to the Firebase team if, the, if it, they can implement it. Uh, I see the points for that. Definitely good, good, good point. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, looking at the Firebase console, I see that uh, for the performance, I also use performance for my apps, and uh, there is there is a screen reading traces. I'm not sure if this is yep. for animation or you know for just showing the page by page. I mean, when you navigate no, from a page to another page, from a screen to another screen. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a for for the for the navigation. It's not that uh, for the for the animation jank, unfortunately. Mostly the freeze times would be 
but uh, uh, I think you don't have like specific uh, specific point that you have just for the like animations. And I think it would be great. Like I love that point. Never thought about it. <laughs> All right. Any other question? We have we passed our mark of Maybe uh, in your time. I have another one. Go ahead. <laughs> also for the Firebase analytics, uh, do you know if the like the IP and the phone uh, details are sent it or I can uh, hide this from that because of the GD. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, IP is okay. Uh, I, I like IP. <laughs> IP cannot be sent. Like uh, uh, GDP. Uh, uh, GDPR. GDPR. You sh you should not track those things if you are not allowed to by the user. The location and stuff is pretty much by users. Uh, provider or internet provider it's you should not track uh personal info and not expert on a G, uh, like uh not chat gpt uh gdpr and not uh, expert on GDPR. <laughs> yeah on G, gdpr uh, show sh yeah uh, i think you should not track i think uh, uh the connecting the user ID to the specific user that you have in your database, I think it's okay. You you should you can track your users without like matching one on one to your records in your database. And in did that case, I think it's okay to track like phones and IPs because there is like no matching between your users. If you connect the ID between your a user and uh, the analytics data, in that case, I think there are some bro uh, broken rules in G uh, GDPR. But I'm not sure. Like, uh, yeah, I'm not expert are, on uh, these are default when you are logging an analytics. Yeah, but matching the ID and the ID in your database, it's up to you. You don't have to push ID of the user mm -hmm. uh, to, in the code. So tracking user is diff something different than the matching that analytics record with the ID in your database. You still can track or, mm -hmm. uh, record your users without knowing what user it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got you. Thank you. No worries. Analytics by default is aggregating data. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't have... Uh specific user track on mm -hmm. analytics yep that's that's what i said okay so uh, we are past five minutes uh, i think we should uh, if there are any questions i think we should stop here and thank you dominic for uh, presenting us the uh, new feature is the flutter and uh, the firebase and thanks for inviting thanks, me. Yeah. Thanks for the participants. Uh, I uh, hope it was a good presentation and a good time for you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Dominic. Have a great day. You too.